eventually, now it did take me, took me time, it took me time, I will admit that, it took me time, but eventually I let it go. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Silver and Sensational. It is the I, Lois as in Lois Mills. I'm going to dive right in to a subject that is uh, something we can all relate to on some level. You know, why do we let the people on social media get under our skin? If we go back 20 years, we didn't have Facebook and Instagram. And so we could all be big fish in little ponds. And now we find that we are little fish in big ponds. So if you think you are the very best creative, uh, let's say, embroidery, and everybody in your little embroidery guild thinks that you're the cat's meow, that's that's a phrase young people aren't going to want to hear, but then you get, you sign up on Instagram to follow the people who embroider, and you come away thinking... I think I'm just going to use the needles to stab myself because I am nothing compared to them. And then let's take it another step into, let's call it the ostentatiousness of people, especially some celebrities that really find it just impossible not to flaunt their money and their possessions and the latest of this and the $95,000 Hermes handbag and the, and it, it just goes on and on and on. Perhaps some of the more mature people might not look at that and think, well, why don't I have that? Some, maybe some do, but I think Where that really lays the greatest influence is among younger people. As much as I appreciate all the advancements we've made and what we have at our fingertips today that we didn't have 20, 30 years ago, I mean, you know, I I appreciate it, but it also comes with a very high price, unless you can keep things into perspective. Moving away from celebrities, there are some people who will post these things like they have, you know, they're on this glorious holiday with the most adoring husband. And if it's a children's vacation, you know, they have all these little perfectly looking children that are posing. And one thing I've noticed about little, little kids, you know, six and under, is whenever I see their parents posting things, these kids are always posed. You know, they've got the smile, they've got the look, they've got... And I'm thinking, what happened to the naturalness? What happened to just capturing shots of impromptu... Not posed. And it, and, and the kids, I can tell that the kids themselves are the ones doing the cute shots. And I think, you know, are you growing up to believe that everything you do is adorable? And my God, what an awakening you're going to get when you go out into the real world. But I'm getting off track. So let me zoom back. Why do some people feel the need? to post things and maybe embellish them a bit or maybe embellish them a lot. When they do, you have other people looking and saying, I'm not doing as well. How come they have a house and I don't have a house? How can they afford to be going on trips like that? I can't afford to do that. And I know one person I'm thinking of in particular, oh, she was in her 30s and You know, she really wasn't doing poorly. She had one child, both she and her husband worked. And, you know, they were not super successful, but they certainly weren't in need. And she told me, you know, I just got off of social media altogether. And I said, why is that? She said, you know, I'm tired of feeling bad that I don't have what other people my age 
have. And I thought, isn't that sad? This is sad. I have fallen prey to that as much as I hate to admit it. I am not somebody who by nature is envious. And I've said this before about what my father used to drill in me. And so for those of you who haven't heard it before, I'll tell it. And for those of you who have, sorry about the repeat. When I was born, my father bought a two-wheeler bike for me. So with great big blocks, wood blocks on the pedals, is this little 16-inch, if it was even that, two-wheel bicycle. So he put trainers on, and when I was two years old, I would ride it with the trainers. And by the time I was three, the training wheels were off, and I was riding this bicycle. And, oh, my father was so proud, whatever. But, you know, I got to be 12 years old, and I still had this same little baby's bike when everybody my age all had regular size 24-inch women's bicycles. So, you know, I would say... Why can't I have a new bicycle? I, you know, I'll get a used one. I just, everybody has a new bike. My dad looked at me and said, listen, if you're going to look at other people, you're always going to find somebody prettier, smarter, and richer than you. So if you're going to do that, you are never going to be happy. I mean, he repeated it not just about the bicycle, but I, you know, whenever I made so-and-so and so-and-so That's what I used to hear. And you know, I realized or somehow or other, it was good fortune for me that that sunk in. So being jealous or being envious of other people, that really hasn't been part of my being until recently. And it really has to do with what I'm doing now. There's a somebody that I know from my hometown who started doing blogs and whatever like 10 years ago. And I kept looking at her and saying, how does she happen to have all these people following her? This incredible website. Her husband is a godzillionaire. And I mean, really? And it used to... I. Just, it used to just get under my skin. Why has she got all of these followers? I negated the fact that she's been at it for 10 years, and I've been at this for a year and a half. And I negated the fact that, you know, she's got a shed load of money, and that's a British term, because I didn't want to use the English, which is, you know, okay. So it's a shed load here and a shed load in England of money to get all these people to write and to do and all this other stuff. And this isn't sour grapes. This is, you know, the way it is. Because whether it's trying to sell things online or doing YouTubes or podcasts, you know, people who haven't done it will say, well, you know, just get a website and sell your jewelry online. Well, you know what? You could Build a website, but you've got to be able to drive the audience to you. And guess what? This takes money. And the same with podcasts, you know, and the same with YouTube channels. You need money and longevity because it takes time. But I negated all of that. It was she does it and I don't. Eventually, now it did take me took me time. It took me time. I will admit that. It took me time. But eventually, I let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Because I said, why are you comparing yourself? You are apples and oranges with this person. I have to admire what she has done, and I do admire it. But I don't feel the need to feel inadequate or less than. And that's what I'm trying to say to those of you who are looking at who's got what and who's doing what and feeling that your own life isn't as glamorous or that you're not as good as. You know what? You are. And comparing yourself to the people that you see on social media is really doing yourself a huge disservice. Let me get to another aspect of it that is my personal opinion. I don't know if there's been any research on it to show, you know, if what I'm about to say has any real weight to it. But I feel 
that with some of the people out there, household names that show everything they own, I believe that in a lot of instances that it motivates people to want it for themselves and then to go out and steal. And I think that, you know, all of this stuff that goes on with smash and grabs and and all of the pilferage. I don't even know that you call it shoplifting anymore because in certain cities you can you can walk out with $940 worth of goods from a store and not be prosecuted so nobody bothers to arrest you cuz there's no prosecution for it. So I I'm I really believe that this has been a factor in the have-nots wanting what the haves have and they go out and steal it. And so I recently drove down Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, and I noticed that there are these huge concrete geodes. I mean, they're, you know, not unattractive, but they are there lining the curbs so that cars don't jump the curbs and smash into the windows of these very high-end stores and steal everything in it. So I'm not sure, but I feel that there's a certain responsibility and a certain sensitivity that people of great means should have when they flaunt what it is that they buy. I would much rather that they flaunt their good character traits and flaunt love and appreciation and gratitude When I see people doing this, I find it to be tasteless, classless, and basically without sensitivity to those people in the world that are working two and three jobs just just to put food on their table. So I'm not saying that, you know, they should give up what they have. I'm certainly not purporting that. But can you try to find, and I'm talking to those of you out there doing it, can you try to find that fine line that you can perhaps encourage and inspire people to try to achieve greater things, but maybe cut back on some of the materialism, that that is not the be-all, end-all of what we should be aspiring to have in our lives, when there's so many other things that are more important and more lasting. I, can, I could sit back and say this now when I, that I am older, and that I have achieved many of the things I wanted to, and I have even bought many of the things that I admired as a young person. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When I was a little, little girl riding this silly bike, although I think I think I, di- I did get a used bicycle, maybe 12 or 13 years old, that was of standard size. I used to drive this, uh, ride this bicycle and pretend it was a Jaguar. I loved Jaguars. Now, of course, did I know that a Jaguar would just die in the middle of the road and had all kinds of mechanical problems? Didn't make a difference to me. I loved Jaguars. So here I'm a kid pretending my bicycle is a Jaguar. Well, I can fast forward to my early 30s and I got a Jaguar. Oh my God, the fulfillment of a dream. And I'm going to tell you something. Within a week or two, of the newness of the car fading, guess what? I took it for granted. It was a car. Yes, it was a Jaguar, but it was a car. And I found that to be true of many of the things, possessions, material things that I wanted. I don't hide the fact that I was a clothes horse. I would just love anything of beauty being clothing, jewelry, artwork, you name it. I loved buying these clothes and I loved having the jewelry. And then I loved making the jewelry and wearing it and having it. And I can tell you, as I prepare to leave all of my life behind me in terms of selling everything I own and starting fresh in my next phase of my life in France, I can't wait to get rid of this stuff because I tell you what, it's become a burden. It's just too much. I've had my enjoyment from it and I'm ready to move on and I'm happy to be giving these things away or selling them. They're things, people. 
and what social media, I'm afraid, is doing to the bulk of us, particularly younger people, is giving the wrong clues to what really makes a life worthwhile living. It is not having the newest handbag, and it is not dining out at the restaurants where the paparazzi are going to be waiting outside. And it is not any of those things. It's having good health, it's having love in your life, and it's having a purpose in life. And so if you find yourself really becoming either upset or depressed or feeling inadequate, it's really my strong suggestion to get off of social media. And if at some later point you want to hop back on, call that list of people you follow to those people who can be inspirational and those that give you a feeling of being uplifted. So on that note, I'm going to wrap things up and say I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And I do want you to follow my blog, which you can find the link in the description box. In the meantime, of course, I am welcoming your comments. I am loving your comments, so keep them coming. And of course, you know the usual. Once again, I will say to people, it does not cost you a penny to subscribe. So if you haven't done so, please do so, because it helps us tremendously. And then hit the like button, share us with all all of your friends, and of course, the notification bell so you know when a new episode drops. Generally, our Jessica is always on target, dropping at midnight central time Friday morning. So to all of you, thank you again for tuning in. I look forward to seeing you the next time. In the meantime, be well, look after yourselves, and God bless. Bye now. Bye now.